Paul Njuguna is a happy farmer. His joy is attributed from the bountiful rice harvest plantation that sits on a half an acre piece of land located in Moya Kirinyaga County. In this season, he is certain of breaking even. Ni Paul Njuguna, mzaliwa na wana mkulima hapa Moya. Tangu kuzaliwa nimeishi hapa Moya. Kwa hivyo kazi yangu imekuwa tu ni kulima mchele mpaka wa leo. Aswa area hii ni ya kuzaji wa mchele yani mpunga na ndio inafanya mzuri hapa pia ina faida kwa mkulima juzi kutoka juzi juzi tu wakati mambo fulani yalifanyika kupitia kwa serikali yetu na ushirikiano na serikali ya Japan This however was not the narrative four years ago poor planting techniques such as excess irrigation over application of fertilizer no access to agri technological advances made Paul incur high cost of production and post harvest losses Kabla ya intervention ya serikali ya Kenya na ushirikiano wa Japan ukuzaji wa mjeli ulikuwa tu kama kawaida traditionally kupanda tu bila kufanya mahesabu kama umetumia hii faida yake ni hii kwa hivyo ilikuwa tu kupanda tu kama kacha kwa hivyo wakati huo hakukuwa na na maendeleo ilikuwa inafanyika hapa changamoto ya kwanza ilikuwa hakuna kutumia teknolojia ya pili ilikuwa ile ile utumiaje tutuyeme teknolojia kwa mfano application of fertilizers ndawa upanzi time ya ku ku, ku, ku appraisal inputs zilikuwa kiholela holela hakukuwa na elimu yoyote kuhusu mchele ukuzanji kwa mfano kwa ufupi so haikuwa kitu ambayo ingewekwa hata kwa record wakati huo kwa babu zetu wa, baba zetu si kitu ungekuwa umeweka kwa rekodi yoyote ile kwa hiyo kwa maana hakukuwa na in statistics inawekwa agri technology comes in handy in not only lowering cost of production but also increasing yields according to paul the use of a combined harvester has doubled his profit margins teknolojia ya kwanza ni water management Tulikuwa tunaweka maji mingi ni kama samaki unakuza. Lakini tukajua sasa si samaki. Ni mchere mchere haitaki maji mingi hiyo mingi. Kwa hivyo tukafanya hiyo inaitwa intermediate. Hiyo. Tu application of fertilizers. Tulikuwa tunaweka tu kiholela lakini kwa sasa tunaweka na time yake ambayo imefanywa utafiti tulikuwa tupimi fertilizer siku hizi tunapima kwa hivyo tulikuwa tunaweka kama gunia saba mifuko saba ya fertilizer wakati ule una harvest 25 bags siku hizi unaweka tatu una harvest 30 bags the technology advances benefiting rice farmers under more irrigation scheme like Paul are a product of the partnership between government of Kenya capacity development project for enhancement of rice production in irrigation schemes in Kenya CADPAP, National Irrigation Authority, Government of Japan, and Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA. Kabla sinja nikiingia kwa CADPAP, dhuru CADPAP kupitia JICA sijui venye waliingiana lakini tunajua ni cooperation. Eh? Tunajua ni cooperation. Sasa hiyo diyo wa metusa India na kuenhance our brain inakuwa more, more advanced kwa upanzi utunzaji application of fertilizers na harvesting hiyo ingine ni statistics kuweka rekondi ili dakika ya mwisho unajua kama uko na faida au hauna it is through his unit leader that Paul Jogona heard about the training on rice farming by the organizations the trainings he says were the ultimate game changer sasa nikijitumia mimi mwenyewe kama Paul Juguna eh niliitwa ni, 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 ni na unit linda wangu akaniambia kuna kuna watu fulani walikuwa wanahitaji wa kulima fulani waende wakafundishwe kwa hivyo mimi nikawa mmoja wao nikaitwa nikaenda 
tukaenda mahali kunaitwa Miyagi. Hapa sababu hapo ndio nilikundua ni akina nani. Walikuwa wanajiita Kadi Pap. Sasa within that training tukasikia tukasikia kuna jika na tukajua na tukawaona serikali ya Kenya iko pale na serikali ya Japan. Sasa hiyo hiyo shirikiano yao uko atujui venye wanapanga lakini sisi our direct communicator ni Kadipapo At the onset of his rice farming journey Paul spent 15000 Kenyan shillings on five bags of fertilizer 7000 Kenyan shillings on weeding excessive watering that produced only 1200 kilograms on his half an acre the increase in profit margins is loud Nikichukua zamani kwa mfano mimi nilikuwa kwanza nilikuwa ninalima nusuweka nusuweka nilikuwa naweka fertilizer tano costing around 15000 wakati ule eh weeding nilikuwa nafanya na 7000 kwa nusuweka alafu maji nilikuwa naweka tu kwa wingi kiholela holela mwishowe nilikuwa navuna around 1200 bag 1200 kgs but this time kwa hiyo miaka tatu nimekuwa nikipanda na kadi papo na baada ya kupata hiyo ujuzi kwanza nilikuwa nusuweka ninatumia na, na, 1 150 kgs of fertilizer throughout weeding ina ni cost just 3000 production mimi nilifanya production yangu na nikauzisha nikauzi, kadi pap katika ile production ilikuwa 14001 kgs kufanya hesabu kidogo kidogo ya haraka haraka ni kulingana na mbei ya mpunga saa hii 75 nikauza hiyo nikifanya mahesabu yangu inakosa around 100000 lakini ile ingine production nayo around 20000 kwa hivyo niko na faida angalau 60000 kwa hiyo nusuweka lakini zamani ilikuwa 12 bags 1200 kgs production around 40k 40000 ukiuza inakuwa 77000 production faida around 20 something thousand so there is a great difference the government of Kenya and the government of Japan have had several collaborations aimed that enhancing rice production in Kenya they include rehabilitation of irrigation infrastructure and construction of new canals to improve irrigation water hydraulic in Moi irrigation scheme establishing a model farm in Moi irrigation agricultural development miad center for research and extension services and rice based and market oriented agriculture promotion project rice map and implementation of the badam Established in 1954, Moi Irrigation Scheme is the largest rice producing irrigated area in the country. Commissioned in October this year by President William Ruto, the Badam holds a capacity of 15.6 million cubic meters of water, accounting for over 84% of locally produced rice in the country. Over the years, the biggest challenge has been provision of adequate water, and this has impacted the production of rice in this scheme in several aspects. The first aspect is that before the issue of water was addressed, cropping had to be faced and farmers had to be grouped into three groups, each producing at a particular time so that the water could be shared among them. Uh, the second issue is that the lower niches of these schemes would occasionally experience drought and crop failure, thus causing distress to the concerned farmers. Uh, the third aspect was that there was limitation as to what area can be put under irrigation. Among the objectives the Badam is targeted to achieve include stabilizing irrigation water supply for more irrigation scheme increasing the area under irrigation by 10000 acres supporting double cropping increasing rice production and value of production creation of additional 50000 jobs baling of rice straws as fodder for livestock in the region and value addition processes by that harvesting it allows 
for these farmers to put up a ratoon crop, which gives us a second production on top of the primary production. And thirdly, it also allows a significant section of the scheme to go through a second crop, starting from around February all the way to June before they start the main crop. What are the implications of this? The implications of this are that we've one, been able to stabilize and assure farmers of production and indeed harvest, both for internal food security and also for business and marketing where they can create income and therefore improve their livelihoods. At a national level, it means we are able to increase our rice production from what was below 100 metric tons per year in the entire scheme through those aspects of uh, main crop, ratoon crop and second crop to from around 100 to 114 metric tons to currently over 200 metric tons per year. Planting season of rice starts in September every year, a time known to rice farmers in Kirinyaga County as dry. The water from the Badam comes in handy. At the national level, the increase in paddy production means that we are able to reduce our importation by a very, very significant number. Indeed, the ultimate goal is to increase rice production locally to the extent that will, if not minimize, eliminate importation of rice into this country. The exchange and money that is used to import can thus then be saved and ploughed back into this country to develop other enterprises and other businesses for the benefit of the local farmers. My name is uh, Innocent Ariemba. I'm the scheme manager for Mwe Region Scheme. Um, this scheme is uh, currently 30,600 acres, which are under rice production. And uh, as you can see, uh, at this site, we are currently doing an irrigation expansion uh, of 10,000 acres to add the existing scheme. And that expansion starts from here. This is the point where we are um, diverting water from uh, the, what we call Link Canal 2. Link Canal 2 is the canal that gets water from uh, the Diba intake and into the, into the main scheme. But because of the addition of 10,000 acres, we are doing um, a diversion here uh, to link Canal 3. Um, so as you can see, they have done a coffer dam to divert the water from the, 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 the working site so that they can be able to construct, to construct the diversion gates for link Canal 3. Um, and uh, on this side, you can see lining of the canal for the 10,000, additional 10,000 acres ongoing so that we can successfully implement uh, the 10,000 acres, which we expect to finish by April next year. According to Ministry of Agriculture, capacity development project for enhancement of rice production in irrigation schemes in Kenya, CADPAP, aims at promoting mechanization, enhancing irrigation water management, creating paddy market, interventions and increased paddy rice cultivation and extension. I must say that the government, I mean the country, spends about 25 billion per year to import rice. So we want that money to come back here so that we can use it for other production. We have a, a very big and exploited potential across the country, and uh, that is why all these issues have to be put together so that we can uh, try to increase our production to one self-sufficiency. We are implementing a national rice development strategy that started in 2019 and ends in 2030. In that strategy, we are proposing four objectives. One is to increase the area under rice, to increase productivity. The third one is to increase act, uh, active participation of the private sector in the value chain. And the number four is to create jobs along the value chain. So I want to say that we are on track in that, uh, in that uh, uh, container. And we are hoping by the end of this strategy, in the 10 year period, we should be able to meet at least 80% of our rice needs locally. Government of Japan through JICA has played a key role in enhancing productivity of the scheme through technical and financial support, feasibility studies to develop and improve rice crop production started in 1986, and modernization or rehabilitation project implemented between 1989 and 1991. This is not the end of our partnership. Um, the people tend to focus on the infrastructure, hardware side, but uh, we, Japan, uh, very much uh, uh, put importance 
on the uh, soft component side, meaning the capacity development of the people concerned. Uh, here, uh, we grow rice and uh, we expand this technology, know-how, skills to other regions of the count, uh, country in Kenya, especially in the Western. Uh, so Japan uh, uh, with the Kenyan uh, have formed a partnership over the 35 years uh, now, uh, the farmers, number of farmers uh, here has uh, increased, I think, 3.5 times and uh, rice production has uh, increased five times in comparison with what when we started our partnership 35 years ago. And importantly, the income of farmers per household has increased 15 times or 13 times more than it used to be 35 years ago. So this is the achievement, but we are in the middle of our long journey. Together with the Kenyan, uh, we uh, walk a long way further so that uh, uh, you can uh, produce rice twice a year here and also spread and share your know-how gained here to other parts of the country. So at JICA, we have uh, programs that are you know, trying to solve issues that the Kenyan people are facing, especially those who have been left behind by economic growth. So in terms of agriculture, we have various you know, interventions that we, we try to align with the Kenyan government to try to support uh, farmers and households and communities. So particularly for us, we have activities here in Moya uh, which we are trying to implement together with the government of Kenya. One of them being uh, the issue of water, which has been existing for a while in this area. So we saw the problem and with the uh, co cooperation with the government of Kenya, we decided to build Thiba Dam to bridge that gap. And uh, in align to this also, the main objective was to expand the scheme by an additional 2,000 hectares. So through this, we are trying to build uh, other irrigation canals and drainages to try to bring in to the scheme those farmers who are left out. Like I said in the beginning, we don't want anybody to remain behind in economic growth. So that is what we've been doing here in terms of infrastructure support that we gave. And at the same time, we also have, as you've seen, a soft component of our activity that is focusing on capacity building and training the farmers on how to uh, you know, do their rice cultivation in a more improved way. With rice consumption increasing by 12% annually, Kenya is targeted to boost the production of rice as it currently meets approximately 20% of the total demand. Thank you for watching today's episode of Mukulima Tech. Keep it KTN Farmers TV for more informative shows and remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Farm Kenya.